But we'll turn to our business update then, starting with a gloomy forecast for the world economy in 2023, one that says that it is perilously close to falling into recession. Our business editor, Charles Pellegrin, is here on set with more. Hi, Charles. Hi, Aaron. Absolutely. That's uh, the assessment made by the World Bank in its global economics uh, a report released on uh, Tuesday. Uh, the war in Ukraine and the, the lingering effects of the COVID pandemic are uh, the driving factors for revising their forecast uh, downward, uh, mainly because of their contribution to rising inflation. The move away from Russian fossil fuels has brought up energy prices, and the actual war in Ukraine has reduced global supply of crops, leading to higher food prices. Um, this has led the World Bank to revise its forecast for global growth in 2023 to 1.7% as opposed to its previous forecast of uh, 3%. Uh, percent. Uh, that was from June. And as you can see, the world's most influential economies, the U.S., the euro area, and China, are all showing signs of weakness. The eurozone economy expected to stagnate, for instance, at 0%. This will have uh, an impact on developing economies like the ones of sub-Saharan Africa, all the way at the end of the screen there. Uh, as the U.S. raises its interest rates to combat inflation, it's making it more expensive for developing countries to borrow money on international markets, thus stifling growth. France 24 spoke to David Malpass, the president of the World Bank. The problem is it's such a broad-based uh, slowdown that it's affecting the people in countries around the world, the developing countries. They're facing high debt levels, slow growth from the rest of the world, and a s severe weakness in new investment going into their countries. So the worry that we have is that this may be a prolonged uh, slowdown for people in developing countries. And now, a quick look at the so-called Three Amigos Summit between the USA, Mexico, and Canada. The leaders agreed to work for better connections between the three countries and making the region stronger when it comes to energy provision and semiconductor manufacturing. This will mean more integrated supply chains between them for critical minerals, electric vehicles, and semiconductors. Reducing reliance on Asian supply chains, and particularly Chinese ones, has been one of the uh, cornerstones of U.S. economic policy. Let's take a look at the markets now. Uh, in Asia, stocks are trading higher ahead of uh, U.S. inflation data for the month of December, which will then guide decision-making by the Federal Reserve, which already raised its rates uh, seven times in 2022. As you can see, uh, the Hang Seng in Hong Kong up uh, two-thirds of a percent, and the Nikkei in Tokyo up over uh, one uh, percent. In Japan, uh, Fast Retailing, the uh, owner of fashion brand Uniqlo, has said it will raise wages for its staff there by 40%. This as the country is experiencing its fastest inflation levels in the past decade. This also comes on the back of comments by Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, who called on businesses to increase salaries. And finally, here in France, the planned raising of the retirement age to 64 has many worried, especially those that work in physically demanding or uh, dangerous environments. The project makes exceptions for careers that are particularly demanding, allowing people to or retire early, but the exact criteria requested by unions for these professional hardships hasn't been taken on board by the government. Jean-Emil Jamin tells us what metal workers think about the plan. In this aluminium factory, work is a strain. Denis Vatin has toiled away for 35 years in clouds of smoke and fumes. I'm 58 years old and still have at least four years to go. At the end of the working day, I already feel tired. In France, the proposed system reform will see working age prolonged by two years, from 62 to 64. Ghislaine Demain is the youngest member of this group, but at 44, even he doubts he'll be able to work another 20 years. With the dust, with everything we do, it's very tough. In the factory, the hard labor starts at 5 a.m. Workers feel their efforts demand greater recognition. All jobs are difficult, but some are a little more than others. And I've been doing this job for 40 years, so I think it's time for me to take a break, to get some fresh air. It will be more than 60 years old because of the reforms. But how it was before, for me, was very good. Struggling under the heavy loads and dust-filled vibrations represents a very different daily challenge to their office colleagues, stationed just several meters away. If I worked in the workshop, it would bother me. Today, for the constraints I have, it wouldn't shock me to finish at 65. To provide employees the appropriate reprieve at the end of their careers, bosses are seeking the best formula. Like the French government, 
They're now considering different pension ages and benefits according to varying physical demands in their line of work. And no doubt, Aaron, that there will be more discussion about the uh, specifics of the pension reform plan in the coming months as the, the plan goes through Parliament and as also, also it's discussed by unions as they protest uh, against it. Going to be a, a tough month for the French government. Charles Pellegrin, thank you very much.